Hi, Ian. How's it going? Hey, Josh. How you doing? I'm great, man. Good. Uh, I just want to start by thanking you for uh, taking the time to uh, speak with me. Uh, this is this is actually the second time I've interviewed you, and I'm not sure if you'll remember the first time, but I think it was. Uh, were, were you in uh, Ottawa? Was it? Or I was. Yeah, I was in Ottawa. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely remember it was a, a rig rundown. Uh... Um, a YouTube video or something like that, right? Yeah, that's right. It was actually like super well received. So cool. thank you for that. People really enjoyed that interview. Oh, no problem. Great. So now I'm here to harass you about your new album. I've I've listened to Afraid of Heights probably like twelve or fifteen times now, and I have a lot of questions, sir. A lot of questions. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No problem. Go shoot. Okay. So again, you're producing and you're playing on this album. Did you consciously go into the studio with uh, a plan to do anything different in terms of your sound or your writing in terms of guitar parts? Yeah, well, generally, like every time I make a record, you want it to, you know, kind of beat your last one or, or make it, you know, have it sound better than your last one. So um, going in with this record, uh, like with Dead Silence, uh, yeah, I remember we did that in- interview, re- uh, last interview was regarding uh, Dead Silence like during that tour, I think. Yep. Um, but, you know, like l- when you look back on the last thing you did, you, you kind of end up picking up the small flaws here and there and, and, and wanting to improve on those things. So I think with this record, um, it, it, you know, it's it's more like just sharpening you know, your your tools and, and uh, making making it the record that you wanted it to be on the last one even better, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I might be crazy, but I hear songs like The Crutch, and your guitar tone sounds similar, but there's something about it that's different. Did you use any different amps or different guitars than you used in the past on, on tracking this record? We used, uh, on this record, we used uh, Fairchild... 660 uh, compressor limiter more uh, more so on guitar than we did on uh, Dead Silence. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, we we had done that in I think it was on the second record uh, out in Vancouver at the the warehouse. Uh, they have a they have a couple of Fairchild 660 compressors that that are just immaculate and they uh, they sound amazing. And uh, we've always you know we've always rented one from them for. For bass, um, and we will occasionally use it on drums as well. But this time, uh, we yeah, we we just we used it a lot, pretty heavily on guitar on this record. So that might be the the, the difference that you're hearing uh, in the guitar tone because the, the guitar is definitely a little bit more parked on this record as opposed to the last one, which has a little bit more headroom. Yeah, I was gonna say it's still that like distinct. Billy Talent tone that like everyone knows and loves, but I, I I did notice there was just a subtle difference, and I I couldn't put my finger on what it was. Did you use like similar amps though throughout like that you have through the past years? Yeah, also as well. Like we use I use the same amp combination that I've used probably for the last three albums, um, but this time we get all the guitars at our studio in Toronto, which uh, you know we've been building up to be a really really good functioning studio to do. To record all the instruments, but um, so we did everything except for drums at, at our studio in Toronto on this record, and um, basically using the same guitars, uh, same amp configurations. Um, but I also got a uh, a new BCM, it's a 1972 BCM 10 um, broadcast console oh. I picked up uh, a couple of years ago, and this was the first time I used that on this record as well. And uh, that that thing sounds really, really big, especially for for guitars and, and bass and vocals and stuff like that. But it's uh, it it definitely has a bigger sound to it than you know, just going through a standard uh, SSL desk. That's awesome. And, and just as a quick aside, and maybe uh, on on that note, I did really notice that the backup vocals were incredibly punchy compared to previous records like they really stand out i specifically the uh ghost ships and the the, the line uh cannibal rats specifically that line on backup vocals, oh wow cool man i again apart from guitars just the backups on that That's line cannibal thing, rats, yeah. it makes me want to tear walls down it's crazy how powerful those vocals <laughs> come through it's fantastic that's great, yeah, and and well, yeah, with the vocals, uh, I guess the the only newest addition to 
my vocal chain would be, uh, I've always used an 1176 uh, anniversary edition pair of uh, 1176s that I have for vocals mm -hmm. with uh, you know, either a 1073 or 1084 need preamp. But uh, this time around, I picked up a Poltec uh, Solid State MEQ5, which really, really delivers. Like, you can really zone in on the frequency that uh, you want to, to punch out a bit. And uh, so we, we use that quite a bit on the vocals as well. So maybe, maybe you're hearing a little bit of that. Honestly, just the the production overall just kills, like absolutely kills. Like to to your point earlier, you know, you want to make the next record a little bit better than the last. It's like I I love the Dead Silence, it's a fantastic record. This one's different. Like I, I just found a lot of the tones were different, and to to kind of hark back to to the song The Crutch, like it, it was a very I, I find that song has a very blues rock kind of guitar tone to it throughout the in, entire song. It's really yeah, it, it's a nice little change of pace like and then you go into songs like february winds which drops out to a completely acoustic bridge and it's just it's beautiful did you kind of like in the studio like do things like that happen naturally in the studio or do you kind of like hear a musician and go ah you know what i want to do something like almost stevie ray vaughn-esque when i go into the studio writing this song yeah sometimes i mean sometimes you uh things will happen uh, improvisationally while you're making a record but um the, the way I've always kind of worked is like is to get a really good blueprint uh, demo going, and uh, I'll, I'll program the drums and uh, BFD and and just get the closest thing to the. And work I'll work on that for months and, and well a couple of years on this record, but uh, yeah. I'll, I'll work on a really you know good quality blueprint demo um, to the point where it feels done, and then we'll go into the studio and record it. So. A lot, uh, most of the songs were, were already completely demoed, and, and I had done sing on all of them except for a couple uh, before we went into the uh, into the studio. So it was uh, it was an easier way, way of working with. And that part of the February wins, uh, it was something I just, I just wanted to try out in the uh, demo process, but I, I thought it, it sounded a little too weird, so we were going to take it out, and then and then we got to actually making the record. And you know, I got a really nice acoustic tone going. It ended up working really, really great, so we left it in. Yeah, it really jumps out. I think, and obviously you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the only other song that was primarily acoustic for you was "Stand Up and Run" off the last album. Yeah, that was uh, "Stand Up and Run" was uh, started as the acoustic guitar, and and it, it's pretty much throughout the entire song. And then uh, on this record, uh, "Rabbit Down the Hole" had an acoustic intro, it was the finger picking yeah. intro as well. The intro to that is just beautiful. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's a, that was a fun to record. Now, coming on to tour, are you running kind of the similar rig to to the one we spoke about last time? The the Stevenson, the Tremolux, the Diesels, the Bogner cabs. Yeah, pretty pretty much uh, similar rig. I've taken out the Comet Concord out of the out of the equation. Mm -hmm. um, I find the Stevenson does that kind of what the comet does enough that it doesn't need to have the comet in there and, and we were having phasing issues and things like that when you have three three cabinets going right. it just creates a, a little too much phasing issues so uh we ended up just uh, bringing out so we had the vh4 diesel and we had the my, my custom 60 stevenson basically uh, the two of them and, and instead of running them to bog here at this time we had this uh big set piece that uh, we wanted to keep the, the stage pretty clean mm -hmm. to, to have a clean look. So we had we had space behind the set piece to, to kind of like experiment and try different things. And uh, uh, Matt, our production guy, ended up finding these great ISO cabs uh, called Silent Sister. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I tried them out, and they were, they were incredible. They have uh, one G30 speaker, selection speaker inside. And uh, I just mic'd them up like I would normally mic a guitar cab in the studio with an SM57 and uh, uh, MD421. And the, the tone you're getting is just almost like a recording studio quality. And it's, it's the same. It's, it's a, coming right at the speaker and going right to front of house. So, That's um, awesome. I've been using yeah, two Sal sister cabs on tour. Right on. And for, for pedals, are you still running like the, the Z-Vex and the Boss Reverb? Yeah, so uh, pedal pedal rig has pretty much stayed the same. Uh, I use a Woolly Mammoth. Um, now I've got a Kalan KTR in my in my pedal configuration. Nice. Uh, I've been using it a lot. Well, I used it a lot on the record for 
most of the solos. So, um, and I have a original quad, so I didn't want to take that on the road. Oh, yeah. so I ended up getting a GTR, and they, they pretty much sound identical. So that's uh, that's probably the only new addition pedal wise, as well as uh, oh yeah, one more pedal. Uh, I have a Caroline Kilobyte pedal, which is like a lo-fi delay effect pedal, which uh, it's the only the only appearance it made on the album was on Big Red Gun. But uh, I, I love using it live because it can do really. It's got this havoc switch that if you if you engage it, like it'll just do really weird things and kind of uh, loop out of control. And you can actually turn your tone knob on the guitar so so it affects the sound of it. So it's a pretty neat pedal. That's awesome. Fun to play live. Now, two things I totally spaced on the last time we spoke uh, were strings and picks. I did not ask you what you use for strings and picks. Oh, um, so I was I was using uh, Dean Markley strings for the longest time, um, and then I tried out the new Dario XL, the New York XL, and uh, I'm in, I'm really enjoying the sound of those right now. So. I've been using uh, New York XL for the last year, I think, now. And uh, picks, I'm currently using uh, Dunlop. Um, the brain picks, I, I was using the, the red brain picks for the last uh, 10 years, but they seem to have changed the material, and they're, they just they just weren't the same. And so I started using the Dunlop Max Grip pedal, uh, picks 73, yeah, 73 millimeter. Right on. I can actually, I, I can speak to the D, the Didario uh, NYXLs. Uh, Larry from Diodario, shout out to Larry at Diodario, uh, hooked me up with a couple pairs of those, and they are absolutely fantastic, especially if you're down tuning. Oh, they're amazing, yeah. They're great. They're great. They stay tuned really great. They're, they're really nice and vibrant, and uh, they bend really well, too, as opposed to the regular Didarios. I, I never never really liked the regular Didarios because I found them quite stiff compared to, like, Ernie Balls or New yep. Markley's. But when I tried the New York XLs, it was incredible. Could not agree with you more. Quick little, like, because uh, I know we're probably running out of time, um, Desert Island question. If you only had one guitar, one pedal, and one amp, what would your choices be? Ooh, wow. <laughs> one guitar, one pedal, one amp. Uh, I would say my 1952... Uh, Telecaster reissue, um, the one I pretty much use on every album, but my main guitar. And I would say probably my main Stevenson head, because I've used that pretty much for the last 15 years. Um, and it's got three channels, so you're covered for game stages. And one pedal, I would have to say probably the Klon KTR. Because it's it, it's just the best sounding pedal ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you for your time. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. And hopefully, the next time you're in my neck of the woods, I actually just missed you when you were in Ottawa. Unfortunately, I was out of town filming. Hopefully, we can we can catch up and do oh, no a, a video rundown. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no worries. Uh, we might be back. Uh, we'll probably be doing festivals in or around. Uh, the summertime so yeah well i'd love to do another rig rundown and uh and talk about gear awesome man well thank you again for your time i really appreciate it, it was great talking to you great Take no care. problem josh Bye-bye. thanks so much take care